Hi everybody. Welcome to the Baker Air Guns Quick Look. I'm Donnie Reed and I am about to make a lot of you angry. Please keep in mind, your hostility should not be directed at me, not me personally. I do not make the laws of physics. I simply study them because I am a nerd and I want to know what is really going on here. That question eats at me. Now because I have studied physics, I have a lot of things going on in my head. And these are sometimes equations and there are terms in equations that mean things. Uh, mathematics is essentially a language and it can sometimes pose a question as much as give an answer. So I had a 25 caliber impact 700 mil barrel that was tuned to shoot the 33.9 grain JSB pellet at 965 feet per second which comes out to about 70 foot pounds. I also have had 30 caliber guns which could also be tuned to 70 foot pounds and I had considered which one of these would actually penetrate further the 25 caliber with the 33.9 grain pellet at 70 foot pounds or the 30 caliber 44.75 grain pellet again at 70 foot pounds now to discuss this properly I'm going to have to talk a little bit of physics but I promise you I will simplify everything I will try not to be too mathy but we do need to discuss this a little bit and for a more detailed explanation you can read the written article that accompanies this video uh, there will be a link to that in the description of this video and you can find it on our website bakerairguns.com now for all of my fellow nerds out there that study physics, our engineers, our physicists, and so forth, please excuse how rudimentary my explanations are. Again, I'm trying to keep this simple so everybody can understand it, whether you've ever studied physics or not. But we are raising the question, which gun will penetrate further? Let's see about it. Now what we're basically studying here, what we're concerned with are terminal ballistics. Terminal ballistics are essentially what happens to a projectile when it hits a target. And there are a lot of things to be considered here. It's kind of a messy ordeal. Uh, a pellet has a certain amount of energy. So that's a simple equation. It's one half mass times velocity squared, but we modify that a little bit for our air guns so that we can use grains as our mass measurement and feet per second as our velocity measurement. And when we plug those numbers in, we get out foot pounds of energy. So that is one factor in this whole thing is the amount of energy the projectile carries. For our purposes, for this test, that is equal. Now, actually, the 30 had a very slight advantage. I think it was, yeah, 70.21 foot-pounds average energy for the 25 and 70.63 foot-pounds average energy for the 30. So the 30 had a very minor advantage here. Another thing that must be considered is momentum. Momentum is simply mass times velocity. And again, the projectile weights, their masses are different. The 30 caliber is heavier. Uh, however, the velocity for the 25 is 123 feet per second higher on average. So when you do the math, and I'm using arbitrary units here, I don't want to convert things to metric or anything, so I just use mass in grains and velocity in feet per second, and we'll come up with units we'll call momentums. The 25 has 32, I'm sorry, 32,761 momentums, while the 30 caliber has 37,724 momentums. So the energy for these guns is equal. The momentum the projectiles carry, the edge goes by 5,000 units 
to the 30 caliber. The 30 caliber has more momentum than the 25 caliber pellet. Now another factor here is inertia. Inertia is simply an object's resistance to a change in its speed or direction. And this is controlled solely by mass. So, again, the 30 caliber has the advantage here. It is 44.75 grains compared to the 25 at 33.95 grains. The 30 caliber has more inertia. So the energy is equal. The 30 caliber has more momentum and more inertia. However, most animals average about 70 to 75 percent water. Therefore, the drag force becomes supremely important to penetration. Uh, for a very simple explanation of drag force, it's essentially how hard the target is pushing back against the projectile. And it will dictate how quickly the projectile stops in that medium, in that target. Now the equation for drag force is a little more than I really want to get into here, but essentially there are three major factors to be considered. Being that all pellets were shot into the same medium, we can discount the density of the uh, uh, target and we can focus on three main factors. One, the cross-sectional area of the projectile. The 30 caliber, has a cross-sectional area of 45.58 millimeters squared and the 25 has a cross-sectional area of 31.65 millimeters squared. The 30 caliber has a much higher cross-sectional area than the 25 caliber. Now another factor in this equation is velocity and this term is squared in the equation. The 25 had a velocity of 965 feet per second. The 30 caliber had a velocity of 843 feet per second. So the velocity is much higher and squared for the 25 caliber. But there's another factor in this equation to be concerned with, and that is the coefficient of drag. The coefficient of drag for the 25 caliber pellet is better than the 30 caliber. So once we get to really considering the force of drag here, it gets a little iffy on which way this would go. So we're forced to test, and that's what I've done. I have two extra long air gun gel blocks from Clear Ballistics. They are four inches by four inches by 18 inches, and I have two of them, and they're calibrated as 10% ballistic gelatin equivalent. So, I decided to take these two air guns and put these gel blocks at 20 yards away and shoot them and see what happened. Now, the first test was what I call the hard target test, and it is meant to simulate a headshot. I put a piece of 4.5 millimeter plywood in front of the first gel block. I set these gel blocks end to end as I didn't know how far they would actually penetrate and I didn't want to lose the projectiles. So I took my shots and here's some video of that occurring. Now do not pay attention to where these pellets are in the gel. This medium has the tendency to make a projectile bounce. So the projectile goes in a certain distance and then bounces backwards by the time the gel collapses. So what we measure from is the end of the wound track, not where the pellets are in the gel. So keep that in mind while you're watching this. And I actually first took two shots with each projectile and discovered I had plenty of room left for more so I actually did five shots each with each gun. Watch these clips and I'll be back.
Now, let's have a look at the results. As you can see, the 25 caliber penetrated an average of six tenths of an inch deeper than the 30 caliber. This is a significant result and you can see the actual longest shot into the gel was again the 25 caliber. So plain and simple for a hard target test the 25 caliber will out penetrate the 30 caliber when they're set to the same energy level and using these exact projectiles. But that can't be the whole story, can it? I still had an untouched block of ballistics gel, so I decided to do a soft target test, and that means just shooting the bare gel block. For this, I fired three shots each, again at 20 yards, and I have a video clip of that as well. Have a look. Okay, what it might have been a little difficult to see in that video clip was that all three of the 30 caliber pellets were captured by the gel block. They stopped in the block. All three of the 25 caliber pellets went completely through the 18 inch block. Here are the measurements. As you can see, we've got about 17 and an eighth, 17 and a 16th roughly um, average depth for the 30 caliber. And we have greater than 18 inches of penetration for the 25 caliber pellets. I think this puts the proverbial nail into the coffin concerning this issue. There is no question that in my experiment, I have found that the 25 caliber will out penetrate the 30 caliber when set to the same energy levels and using these exact projectiles. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Does that mean that the 25 caliber is actually the deadlier gun? In certain situations, I might have to say yes. Uh, if you consider hunting a large animal, such as a hog with a thick, hard skull, you are A, more likely to penetrate that skull with the 25 caliber pellet, and B, likely to penetrate deeper into the brain with the 25 caliber pellet. So in that particular instance, yes. But does that mean the 30 caliber is a puny weakling of an air gun? No, no, it is a supremely deadly air gun. However, as with anything in the world, there are advantages and disadvantages. The simple fact that it is larger in caliber does not necessarily mean it will penetrate further. In fact, it means the opposite. However, 30 caliber guns are usually capable of higher energy levels than a 25 to begin with. So would this same result occur if you have your impact 30 set to 80 foot pounds compared to a 70 foot pound 25? I don't know. I've never tested that. However, now I kind of want to. But this information is free and it's yours to do whatever you want with. Again, please don't 
send your hostility at me. If you're a 30 caliber fanboy, I don't make the laws of physics, you know? So I thank you all for watching and you guys stay tuned, stay safe and happy shooting. Hi, I'm Dennis Baker with Baker Air Guns. Thanks for stopping by. Click the link below.